Hi there, I'm Laurie Ferlita of Imaginary Trips and thank you so much for joining me today. Out on my walk this morning I noticed a beautiful white birdhouse out in the middle of a field of green and I wanted to capture it in my sketchbook. And so when I started painting it I started thinking about well how do you capture a white object on a piece of white paper? Well, there are some tips and some tricks that I want to share with you today on how to do that. So grab your sketchbooks and let's get started. To paint this, I'm going to use three colors. I have a puddle of sap green, a puddle of raw sienna, and a puddle of French ultramarine blue. When I blend these three colors together, you can see that the raw sienna lightens up the green and gives me some nice warm greens. When I mix in the blue, I get some really nice evergreen type colors. And then when I mix the ultramarine blue and the raw sienna, I get some really nice browns and grays. And so these are going to be the color combinations that I'm going to use to capture that birdhouse. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start putting in the green on the side of the birdhouse. And I'm going to vary my colors. I'm going to add a little bit of blue in here. I'm going to add a touch of green, a touch of the yellow the sienna so that I get a variation of colors. Being careful to cut around the elements in the birdhouse. And when I get down to the bottom of the page I'm just going to wipe my brush off, get the extra pigment off from it, and I'm going to feather those edges out with just clear water so that they kind of fade away and there's color on the page but I'll still have room where I can do my writing down here. Going back, picking up a little bit more color, picking up where I left off. Again doing the same thing down the side and down the back, picking up a little bit more green. Once again I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to feather out all of the edges. Now I'm going to let that area dry and I'm going to start working in the birdhouse area. This is where the ultramarine mixed with the raw sienna that makes so many beautiful different colors of grays comes in very very handy. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to run a just a quick line of color right down that edge. Then I'm going to come back with my brush and very quickly add water wipe my brush off and add a little bit more water so that I'm getting a hard edge where that board meets the side of the house but it looks more like a shadow because that other edge is faded out. While that area is drying I'm going to go down here on the bottom of the birdhouse and I'm going to drop in gray for that. And again this gray is made by mixing raw sienna and ultramarine blue. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to start working here in the top of my birdhouse. I'm putting down raw sienna because this has peeling paint on it now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the green. I'm going to drop that in. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blue. And I'm going to drop that in. Coming back with a wash of the raw sienna and the ultramarine blue.
going to put in a quick and uneven wash on the side of the birdhouse. And the reason I don't want it to be even is because I want to give the appearance of old weathered wood that's been outside for ages. And before that gets completely dry, I'm going to go back and pick up a little bit of the raw sienna and I'm going to drop that in and a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to do the same thing up here along the edge, put down a little bit of color, wipe my brush off, drop in just a little bit more. Again, picking up some of the raw sienna, dropping that in. I'm going to do just what I did on the side. I'm going to put in color. I'm going to wipe my brush off. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to spread that pigment out. And I'm going all over everything. The bird holes, all the details. Again, I'm going to come back. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the raw sienna. And I'm just going to randomly drop it in. And then I'm going to come back and do the same thing with the ultramarine blue. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a shadow. And again, this is the ultramarine blue and raw sienna. However, there's a little bit more of the ultramarine blue, so it's giving me a cool gray. I'm putting in a fairly heavy pigment load. And then I'm going to feather that color out. And I'm going to leave that to dry. Now that my post is dry, I'm going to come back with a little bit of the raw sienna. And I'm going to touch in some of the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to paint in a shadow. And I'm going to wait for that to dry a little bit. And then I'm going to put down a line of just water to soften that edge just a little bit. Now using the ultramarine, the sap green, and the raw sienna all mixed together so that I get the darkest dark I can get, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in the interior. This is a very heavy pigment load. There's not a lot of water on my brush. It's mostly pigment. While the interior is drying, I'm going to come over and I'm going to put in just a very light wash along the bottom of the perch sticks. I'm going to come back with just clear water. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to reach down and I'm going to touch that line of color so that it bleeds up. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of the burnt, excuse me, the raw sienna and the French ultramarine blue and I'm going to draw a shadow. And again using raw sienna and just a little bit of the French ultramarine blue, I'm going to come back, put just a little bit of color along these edges so that they stand out. And if I touch that darker blue, it bleeds just a little bit, but that's okay. It adds a little bit of dimension there. And I have a white birdhouse. Mm -hmm.